Hi, I'm Jordan Royburn, and I'm here with Doug Ramshaw, who's the president of Minera Alamos. And we're here at the September Metals Investor Forum here in downtown beautiful British Columbia. Doug. John. As we get started, can you please tell the audience, just give a quick background of the Minera Alamos story and how you became involved and what your role is now? Absolutely. Um, uh, we completed a merger uh, in January of this year, where it completed in May. Um, Minera Alamos uh, was uh, formed by a group of people uh, that built uh, the original Castle Gold uh, project and mine in, in Mexico. They, uh, they sold that to Argonaut for 130 million bucks back in 2010, building out a heap leach operation uh, at low cost. Um, uh, using their expert, expertise as mine builders. I had a, a company, Corex Gold, that was developing a heap leach operation. We were going through the bulk testing phase, um, and we saw a fit with our commonality in Mexico and desire to build low-cost heap leach. So we brought the two companies together, and uh, we now have three assets which we're looking to develop into mines over the, the course of the next two to three years. Uh, kind of a modular build out the first operation into production next year, the year thereafter a second one and then uh, a final one uh, uh, in uh, 2021. So um, building a, uh, uh, a mining company, a real like thinking about the bottom line profitability actually producing gold mining company. Uh, so a a exciting um, for us. And Doug, I think one of the advantages here, and, uh, and I'd like you to talk about this, um, the three projects, for the most part, these are projects that are scalable in that you can start production at, uh, I don't want to say a cheap cost because nothing is ever cheap in this industry, but these are, you can do what Castle Gold did and, and start these mines small, get them up and running, do some exploration, and then when you can, expand production. Can you talk about that strategy and how it's beneficial for the company? For sure, and I think to some extent it, it would make sense to talk about what the team had done at Castle Gold because when you throw around the kinds of capex numbers we're talking about, some people would roll their eyes and go, that's, that's not achievable, except the team has done it before. Uh, Castle Gold had a project, El Castillo, down in Mexico. It had 300,000 ounces. They put it into production for 8 million Canadian. Uh, at an initial, initial uh, production rate of 25 to 30,000 ounces a year, as they expanded the resource base, they were able to modularly build up the production uh, profile of the project. So they were at 50,000 ounces, and then they were moving to 75,000 ounces when Argonaut came in and bought them. And the reason they got the price was alongside that uh, production scaling, they scaled the expiration of the project. So they started with 300,000 ounces. They went to 1.2 million when they were bought out. So for us, Santana is probably around the same 300,000 ounces. Uh, in the ground right now with lots of expiration upside. But instead of spending a lot of money finding out how many ounces we've got there, uh, we'd rather build that mine for eight million bucks, roughly Canadian, um, spit out a lot of free cash from that to expand that resource footprint. Um, and so it's, it's something, it's not rocket science, although a lot of people would think that we conjured up these numbers in a lab. Uh, uh, because they are remarkably low cost and heap leach does allow you to do that. Contract mining, contract crushing, you're basically building pads and ponds and, uh, and loading the, uh, the ore onto pads. So uh, it's, a, it's a very cost effective low capex way of uh, producing gold. And speaking of heap leaching, I know that the godfather of heap leaching, Chester Miller, is involved. Can you please talk about his involvement as well as Osisco? Because you guys are backed by Osisco. I mean, there's not a lot of juniors that can say they're backed by a Cisco or someone like a Cisco. We're very fortunate both uh, for Chester to, to lend uh, his vast knowledge. He's 92 and I hope I have his mental faculty when I turn 50 because he's the sharpest 92 year old I think I, I've ever met and, and one of the reasons I got involved in the company was uh, the opportunity to work with a Hall of Famer like uh, Chester was just too much of an opportunity to pass up. So Chester has lent a lot of expertise in the bulk testing phase of this project. He's a significant shareholder of the company. And, uh, uh, and then we're, we're also fortunate that a Cisco uh, Gold Royalties 
uh, have backed this, uh, this roll-up of production assets. They spent a long time trying to find the right operating team. There aren't that many anymore that will actually produce, you know, actually look to build mines. I mean, most companies are looking to explore and find something and hope someone buys them out. But in our case, we want to be operators. We want to build something. A Cisco saw our team and wanted to back it, so they own about 16% of the company uh, and will work with us on, on the royalty side to, to fund the, cap this, the modest capital requirements to build these things so that we're not really uh, having to do tremendous equity dilution to, to build out these projects. And finally, Doug, can you tell the audience what kind of news flow they can look forward to over the coming months? Absolutely. Well, we've, we've recently come out with a PEA on Fortuna, uh, our second project that we look to build. It's a slightly higher capex project, so the whole goal was to build Santana first and then move that construction over to uh, Fortuna. So both Fortuna and Santana should have permits in place by year end. Um, we also expect to have the funding package uh, in place to, so not only can we say, you know, we've got a cheap build at Santana, we can point to our treasury and say, and we've got the money to do it. So funding at Santana uh, should then allow us to start construction in the new year um, and potentially be in production by uh, the summer of next year. So notwithstanding that, we, whilst we want to explore out of the cash flow from our operations rather than expensive, dilutive financings to, to accommodate that, uh, we are doing some modest expiration down to our projects as well. So there should be some expiration uh, flow on top of all the perhaps less glamorous development, construction, production news, which uh, uh, to me is where, where the excitement li lies. Thank you so much, Doug. Thanks, Jordan. Always a pleasure.